Okay, uh, I didn't know this would happen, but there's a kind of a connection between before lunch and after lunch. Uh, before lunch, use uh, media or uh, picture or film clips, and I'm just using pictures. Uh, but before lunch had a fairly solid, if not fairly solid, had a solid uh, the, uh, research review and um, lots and lots of activities. My presentation will be much more modest. Uh, the only um, real uh, theoretical background, if you would call it theoretical, is that I believe that uh, in teaching, we should focus on communication and authentic language. And in this activity, there's uh, opportunities opportunities for both. Um, I'm all, I just have one activity based on what I'm going to present rather than uh, many different types. But I really believe that everyone here could find many ways to use this resource in the class. And essentially, I'm just presenting a resource from the New York Times. Uh, do you have access to the New York Times here? I'm not hearing much. Do you have access to the New York Times? Or online? I, well, if you, then you should be good. I checked. I used our secretary's computer, and I could access this site. I have a subscription. I get the paper during the you know in the morning, the paper paper. But I also have digital access. And from what I can see, you do. Pardon me. We have the Tico Times. That's the Costa Rican English language. Well, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Well, no, the reason I'm asking is if, to be sh sure you have access. And I really think you'll have access because I, on my computer, I'm logged in all the time to the time. So I went to the secretary's computer. She doesn't have a subscription, and she was able to access this, okay? At any rate, um, this is uh, pictures to promote thinking, speaking, and writing. And... This is from the Times, a screenshot, intriguing photographs. And I wish we could turn this. Is there any way to turn this one light off? Is there any, this light, is there any way to turn it off? I don't want to cause a problem, but. Oh, boy, that's great. Thank you. OK. So I, uh, the Times has some of the best photography in, uh, in the world. And um, here's the main, here is the, um, what's going on in this picture? This is from the Times. And if you Google what's going on in this picture, you should be able to access this page. And by the way, do you have the handout? Okay, All, everything, the web addresses and everything are in the handout, okay? Now, what's going on in this picture? Intriguing Times images, stripped of their captions. Uh, before lunch, we were shown how to take the sound away and just have the video. And now, it's take the caption away and just have the picture. And there are three questions. It's really a pretty simple plan. Uh, you ask your students, what's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? And what more can you find? And this site wasn't uh, intended to be um, an ESL site, though they do mention ESL students. But I'm thinking, well, what's going on, and then the types of verbs and descriptive language, language we're using. But suddenly, question number two, what makes you think so? I believe the purpose of the time site is to get kids to think about pictures, visual literacy, we might call it.
but I'm thinking the types of language you need to tell why is different than what do you see. And then what more can you find? There's a whole bunch of teaching guides. They got warm-ups, get to know the feature in the classroom, try it in your classroom, go beyond this feature, and you should have that um, web address on the handout. Now, here's a picture. What's going on in this picture? So what do you think is going on in this picture? Now, at one point, I was thinking, well, let's get in groups or do it individually, but why don't we do it as a big group? And you might want to do it as a big group if you have low-level students. Someone asked in the classroom beforehand, uh, you know, what is the classroom beforehand, the presentation before lunch, what level of students do you have? Well, imagine we have beginners and very young students. And I said, what's going on in this picture? What is this? What's this thing here? What? Is... Oh, God, this is not. What are these things here? What are they? A what? If they're oranges. How many oranges do you see? Four. Okay, but look down here at the bottom. And look up here at this boy's face. Do you think there were more than four oranges? Yeah. yeah. But, and I don't want to drag this on too much, but you see how using, if you have low level or younger students, you can guide them along talking about the picture. Okay. Um, so what do we have? Oh, so what do you see in this picture? I said oranges. What else? What is it? Black. Like black from different places. Flags. Flags. Oh, right, flags in the background. There's there's a lot of flags. What else? Okay, but th this I think is interesting. What are they wearing? Now, by the way, as far as, now let's go with teaching like this. She said, they're using sweaters. And I said, yes, what are they wearing? To see how you can teach language just very informally. Okay, what are they wearing? Raincoats? a type of raincoat, but let me ask you a question. This boy, and, and this light is not doing a very good job. It kind of looks like a raincoat, but what are, what's this, and this, and this, and this, and I think this boy has one? What are those things? It looks, it, instead of a raincoat, it might be a raincoat that's a type of uniform because they've got little badges on them like uniforms have. Now, why do you think they would, what does it mean if they have a uniform? They're a team. They're a team. It's a group. And what is the team doing? Throwing oranges. So now, as we do, you see how you can lead the, the, the discussion along, and you uh, you could help groups do this, or however, everybody knows how to handle this type of stuff. Now, there's a "What's more, do you see?" question. Now we talked about oranges, and the boys would like um, throwing oranges. And they've got like a uniform raincoat. What else do you see? What more do you see? European architecture. European architecture. Yep. It looks to me like they're young school, school boys, maybe university or high school age, that are in a demonstration of sorts. 
Okay, they could be in a, a, a definitely high school boys or um, university. Now, why do you think it's a demonstration? The facial expression. The facial expression. He's quite putting an effort into it. They're aged. They also are younger and care more about what's going on. I see more young people protesting than old people. Okay. Now, could they be protesting or could it be kind of a contest? There's some place in Spain that throws tomatoes. That's why. I'm, yeah. So could throwing oranges be kind? Of, have they been doing it? For, okay. Let me ask you. Let me ask you another a related question. What do you see? What is, do you see the guy in the red pants back there? Look. Okay. The red pants here. Look at the ground. Have they been there quite a while? Okay, so now, and, and, I, and this is a real question. I don't know the answer. But if they've been doing this for a while, do you think it's some sort of a contest or a demonstration? In my mind, demonstrations move around a lot. The police may break them up, or they may move from one part of a street to another part of the street. You know, so it could be a demonstration, but I'm almost, especially since they have the teams, teams make it sound like a game. What else do you see? The what? The orange? Oh, well, right, there's orange on his face. Look in the background, this is a little detail. Well, there are two things going on. What are these things? Like boxes you carry stuff in. What do you think they might have carried in? Oranges. So maybe they really stocked up on oranges. And then look behind the boxes. What do you see? A girl, there's a girl back there. Now, does she look like she's been hit with oranges? No, to me, she doesn't. I don't see oranges all over her face and hair. She's so the, brave. What's that? She's so brave. Like she's yeah, she's, she's afraid or she's hiding. Well, I, if you look at the picture closer, and you can do that, of course, you know, we can't now, but I, I think she's like laughing. I, she, she didn't look afraid to me. She looks to me like she's enjoying it. She also may not be the only female in the photo. There seems to be a girl participating. Ah. Oh. Right, right here. That could now. Why do you think that's a female? Okay, I'm looking at the hands, which you can't see, but the hands look masculine. Uh, do you watch basketball at all? The NBA? Uh, several players have a man bun. You know, so that... Uh, it could be a female. It could be. But if you look at the hands, I would say it's a male. Okay. At any rate, do you see how uh, th these three questions can be used? You know, what do you see in the picture? Uh, what makes you say so? And then what more can you say to encourage, you know, looking at detail more? That's the basic use of this activity. But, oh, uh, and by the way, here's the websites. Um, this is a little out of order, I'm sorry. That's the website which you should have for what's going on in this picture. It's a New York Times feature. And then I'm going to show you about the corpus of contemporary American English. Okay. There's 
Um, one um, part of the site that has images from four more years. And so they have a whole bunch. A new image comes out every Monday during the school year. But then there's images from four more years. So if you had limited access or didn't have access to the New York Times all the time, you could just download four, you know, four years of photos and then you're in business. And I chose this one because uh, it's of the little kid in the photograph. I think there are photos that appeal, you know, would appeal more to little kids. And I, to me, that is, is an interesting photo. Here's Michelle Obama with little kids as well. So I, this wasn't, um, the website wasn't primarily designed for younger children, but I think there's enough material that you could use it with younger children. Uh, students and teachers, roles. The students observe, discuss, find meanings in photos and artwork they read and they write. And to me, these are all good things. For teachers, lead open-ended discussions to help students, and that's what I was trying to do, and I'm sure you're more capable than I. Look at details, make observations without leading them toward any particular way. Now, they don't say anything here about supporting the students with language but I think that would be a big part of what we would do is support the students with language, but I wouldn't make it at this point a language lesson. If you were talking about something and they needed vocabulary, then you give them the vocabulary. If they say using, then you can very subtly uh, say wearing. You know? uh, there's a weekly plan and these three questions are a big, big part of what's going on, obviously. After looking closely at the image, think about these three questions. What's going on in the picture? What do you see that makes you say that? What more can you find? Next, in the comment section, uh, click on the comment button and post in the box on the right. So there's a place where kids can add comments. And students 13 and older are invited uh, to comment. And if you have younger students, then the teachers post their comment. Okay. After posting, then you read to see what others have posted. Respond to someone else by posting online and or comment so your students can respond to comments that are online. And use the reply button or the uh, at symbol to address that student directly. And then each Monday, visual thinking strategies, and this is uh, an organization I don't know much about, but they're a partner with the New York Times in this activity. And this visual thinking, thinking organization um, is, um, th th their, their goal is to push understanding images. And then each Monday, uh, there's a uh, discussion from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., a live discussion. So if you were really well equipped with a good internet connection, and if you were in a school that would allow uh, students to participate, then you, they, your students could join a live discussion. On Thursday afternoons, information about the photo is revealed. And then that's an opportunity for your students to read newspaper language. So you've been developing vocabulary and uh, verb structures and all kinds of language around the picture. And that should help prepare them to read what the picture is about. So you've got um, four days to scaffold this reading of the caption. Okay, so here's what's going on in this picture. This is my favorite, I guess. I posted some of the comments. Uh, 
somebody want to read the first one in the upper right? Actually, let me back up. This is why I have my animation. Okay. Yeah, and if you look, uh, if you have the photo uh, a little sharper, you can see a few things that belong to Italy. But notice this theme came up, uh, you know, what's going on? Is it a demonstration or a riot or is it a support? See, it might be a church riot or an anti-church group. It might also just be a fun high school event. Let's go through oranges. So essentially, this person had the same comment that, that we developed. Okay, would you read uh, the next one? What I see in this picture is people throwing oranges. It looks like that. Like they could be nice, maybe. They nice have oranges in their hands, and they have a bunch of orange stuff on their face and round and clothes. There's a bunch of orange stuff on their clothes and floor, and they look like they have been throwing fruits for a while. Why? Well, and someone says she was afraid. I guess this person looks well. She could be having fun. She's trying not to get hit. But it said uh, they have a bunch of knights, and I think some, you know, that implied to me a club or something. Okay, and one more. Yep. Okay. Now, you, you may have noticed I highlighted a few things here because now what the teaching part comes in that I would add. Uh, the um, purpose of this time activity isn't to teach vocabulary. It's to, for visual thinking. And that's all you have to do. And to me, it's valuable because you get people talking and thinking and sharing with each other. But I'm thinking, here's some authentic language, and we may want to use some of it uh, that's useful. So a fun high school event. You know, did you have a fun time yesterday? This was a fun, uh, this conference is, is a fun thing every year. In Costa Rica, do people say that? We, we, we call something fun. It's like... Um, it's really a fun thing. We don't say it's fun. It's a, uh, it's a fun activity. You'll like it. We don't say the activity is fun. It's a fun activity. So here's a chance. It's a fun high school event. So here's an example of that. And then you could build a teaching lesson around this very common use of language, informal language, whatever it is. Okay, do you say whatever it is? Whatever it is, I don't want it to happen again. Just shut up and sit down. Whatever it is. Uh, in the next one, a bunch of. Do you use that expression here in Costa Rica? A bunch of? Do you have a bunch of ideas on how you could use this? Yeah. Do you... Uh, do you have a bunch of things to do today or after the conference? Do you have, you know, is a bunch of, very common. No, we use a bunch of all the time. And then uh, covered in. Uh, you know, uh, this is a, a, a phrasal verb in this case. I think it's a phrasal verb. And uh, you can teach them to, together instead of teaching covered, which is different. You know, the, the, he covered the baby up, or, you know, we use covered like that, but covered in. He, he was covered in dirt. He, that, he was, they're, they're covered in oranges, okay? So here are some very uh, common words and phrases of informal English that your students could use. And I chose to develop a lesson with a bunch of and I got authentic language from 
uh, the corpus of contemporary American English. And I've talked about this a couple times here. Maybe it's getting a little boring or tiring, but this is a free resource. If you go to EnglishCorpora.org, and then you click on COCA, and it's the simplest thing in the world to use. If you want to get material to teach a bunch of, okay, let me ask you a question. If you decided to teach a bunch of, what would you teach? What words would you teach? A bunch of grapes? A bunch of bananas? A bunch of bananas, opinions. a bunch of opinions, all of these are perfectly grammatical and, and well understood, but they're not the common ones. No. Let's see what the common ones are. What we do is, you see where it says collocates? You click on that. Collocates are words that occur together more frequently than would happen by chance. So in other words, here's a bunch of words over here, and here's a bunch of words. <laughs> See, I didn't realize I was saying a bunch of, on it together. Here, but here's a bunch of words over here, and here's a bunch of words over here. Now, what's the probability that you will occur with her tomorrow uh, at the National, someplace else? And it's the same thing with words. What's the probability that word would appear with this word uh, more than would be expected by chance? And I'll show you in a, okay, this is simple to use and you'll understand the concept once you do it. But the first thing is you gotta do three things. You gotta click on collocus. We did that, right? You gotta type in a bunch of. That's like six letters. This is not hard. One click and six letters. And then you click find collocates. And when you do that, actually, here you go. This is a chart. I, I got us all wound up. Everyone wanted to know the collocates. But instead of the collocus, I'm going to show you a search that's useful. You see where it says chart? Right there, chart. We're going to do a collocus search. But if you do a chart search, this is what you get. And this tells you what kind of language is a bunch of. And what it tells us is that. Up here, here's the frequency, 30,000 30, times it occurs in the corpus. Now, here, are these charts tell us what part of the corpus it occurs in. Blogs, it's really frequent. Web, frequent. TV, the movie, frequent. Spoken language, kind of frequent. Fiction, not so much. Magazine, even less. Newspapers. An academic, this is not academic language. Sometimes you want to teach academic language. And it, you know, that's what we do. But there's other times you teach spoken colloquial language. And, or the web. Forget spoken. In web English and spoken, this is a bunch of, it's very frequent. Now, here's another chart. And this chart is by year. And you can see from 1990 to 94, it's about the same, but it starts coming up in 2000, what, 2004. And then it comes up a little bit and it's a little more now. So sometimes you'll see a word 20 years ago was very popular, but now it's much less popular. But what can I say about a bunch of? It's becoming, it's used fairly frequently and becoming a little more popular, especially in uh, internet-based language, blogs and web, TVs and movies and spoken language. Don't use it in academic language. Okay. Here's the colloquy. And what you have here is 
the listed policy. Okay, here's their frequency. You don't need to know too much about this except for the MI scores. This is the statistical um, probability that it'll occur together, how strongly they're associated. And then over here, you can see how quickly the frequency drops. And this is typical of most corpus data. You see how there's two or three really frequent ones, and then it drops off and really drops off. What are the words? Guys, kids, stuff. Okay, now, one thing about, I, I don't, can you read these words? Okay, there's some words, you don't want to do this with kids. For instance, look at number um, nine, number 11, that's a bad, that's flowers, 13. You don't want to use number 13. But that, that really, if you say it, it sounds it. That, it, that, it sounds right. So here you can say a bunch of guys, a bunch of kids, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of crap. Now, crap is kind of in between. It's not a... How would you say? I'm a pretty conservative guy. Okay. I mean, it's pretty acceptable now. It's pretty acceptable now. God, I got a bunch of crap on my bag. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that, that's, that's how we use it. But it, it, does, it ha does have a slightly negative. And the mothers up there are really quite negative. Right? It's like garbage, right? Garbage. It's like garbage, right? It's like garbage. Yeah, yeah. but that's a less polite way yeah. to say that. Bunch of stuff I don't need. Yeah. Okay, and then there's one other search that's the real important one. We did a short search, a short search and a college search, which is there. Now we're going to do a quick search. The chart search told us what kind of language it is. Is it academic or is it blogs? And it told us, is it used, is it, is it becoming more popular or less popular? And there really wasn't much of a change. And then the colleges, we saw words that occur more frequently than would be expected. Guys and kids are real frequent. Now we're going to do a quick search. A quick search stands for key word in context, K-W-I-C, key word in context. And that's just as simple as the others. You have to click on quick. You got to type in a bunch of, and you got to click again. Now, when I asked you for some words you could use with a bunch of, all of you, this is what, 30 of us here, experienced English teachers, you came up with three words. That's, that's a bunch of crap, let me tell you. <laughs> No, it, it, it re no, do you see what I mean? It, it's harder to think. You know, if you have to go home and sit down and think of this stuff for activities, and lots of times it's not very authentic, and if you get a textbook, they're often not very authentic. Um, it's so much easier to get examples from up here. So if I uh, click on this, this is what I get in this center. It's a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of. And then these are not complete sentences. It doesn't give you a full sentence. Sometimes there is a full sentence, but it's a certain number of words on the left, a certain number of words on the right. And you can copy them and paste them in a Word or an Excel document. And then you go through and you pick the ones that would be good for an activity. And when I pick them, I think, okay, is it too hard for my students? Is it about the right level? And you don't want something that's, um, you know, bad language. You don't want bad language in the right level. And then you have all kinds of material for an activity. So if we look at the hand, you have the handout? Uh, you'll see what I did. I made it, 
an activity force. Uh, a bunch of teaching activities. And this is set up for you rather than teachers or for students, but it would be very similar. Uh, use this activity to teach words and phrases from the comments and what's going on. So what did I do? I read the what's going on. This is language that people use. I picked some phrases that I thought would be useful for our students. And then I went to COCA, found out where they were used, how frequent they are, and, and got Carlos as an example. And importantly, this is authentic language is the corpus of contemporary American English, COCA. So direction, complete these sentences using a collocate of a bunch of, for some words you may want to use a number. And those words I wouldn't use, I wouldn't give to your students at all. You can give them 10 words and leave out a bunch, right? See what I mean? How we use a bunch of, a bunch, of, okay. Uh, you could give them 10 words, you could give them four or five words, okay? So, um, and some of them, many of them are kind of interchangeable, but sometimes you'll see that sentences have a negative context, so you probably want a negative word and vice versa. And you can do these by yourself, or do you want to work together on them? What's that? Together or in a group? You want to do a group? Okay, let's do a group. Group one, group two, and three and four. Okay, and it's right now it's about 17 after. Why don't we work for about five minutes and then uh, we'll come back together and share some. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's like immature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how are you doing on your first one? The second one. We were on the second one. The second one. Yeah, you guys are a bunch of morons. Yeah. <laughs> no, that we say that we a bunch of morons because that's one of the words. Which where's that on the list? Yeah, yeah, it's not the top one, but we got you a bunch of morons. That's we we say that, and that's not a in a way that doesn't have. You could say it two ways. Like if we're all friends, you guys are a bunch of morons. Like, you know, we can see, you know, we can say it as a friend, but you can say it in a mean way as well. Right? Okay, what do you have here? Oh, it's getting worse. What? <laughs> negative, negative words. Negative. Which one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now we can put numbers for that. We can. Numbers. Yeah, a bunch of losers and a bunch of assholes. Oh, a bunch of idiots, a bunch of losers, and then we put a number. Uh, <laughs> it can it can be used negatively. That's you know. Yeah. You know. But it, but not always. It can be you know. Hey, there was a bunch of guys there, so we played basketball. You know. Okay, what do we got here? Well, we got a lot of options in we? <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, there's, there's a lot of these will go because they, they fit in. The one thing back here, they noticed that they don't have to be. Yeah. I know you 
I'm going to have to leave, so I want to be sure that and I'm done now anyway. You're not going to use it? I think it's done now. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Not, sure you, you need that, the little... Oh, um, right, right, okay. yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. They say that is one... Uh, slide left? The slide left, yeah. What you want to it? see it? Yeah, let me see what it is. I may have forgotten it. I think it's oh, like the same, right, but right, right. the... Okay. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, no, 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 good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, thank you. No, I don't need it. You don't need it. No, I'll just... I'll ask you to advance it, okay? Okay, should we... How about we come back together and share a couple of examples, and then I just got one more slide to tell you if you have questions, I'll ask them, but we'll probably get done a little early. So does anybody have an example they really like? Okay, read one of you guys have a but we pick one to read. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. How about each in your group pick one sentence to share? Just that'll get us around. So here's the, here's the first one. All right, we are sharing number two. God, oh my God, oh my God, your guys are a bunch of losers. You guys are a bunch of losers. Okay. So which one was going to choose? Number three. Number three. And they were like, well, okay, you guys. Number three. <laughs> and they were like, well, you guys are a bunch of. Oh, you know, I'm going to say that morons. <laughs> so I get to reuse the word because <laughs> I don't get to use it very often. Okay. And this group? Okay, four. Everybody thinks these kids are a bunch of liars. A bunch of liars. Uh, number five, a bunch of stupid teenagers did that. <laughs> a bunch of what? Stupid teenagers. Okay. So, uh, this is an activity I would use. The time didn't, didn't um, recommend it, and I'm sure that you all have different activities that you would use. But as I said at the beginning, um, I... Um, didn't present a theory, any of that stuff. But to me, this is a communicative language. And it's, uh, God, and I forgot the other thing, authentic language. This is being communicative and authentic language. And to me, those are two basic principles of language teaching. Okay? And I've got one more slide that I probably should have showed you. So let me show it. Oh, hold it, hold it. Do you see, uh, back up just a bit. Uh, here for the quick search, I've got a bunch of, a bunch of, that's why I typed in, right? And this gave me all of these examples. And there's hundreds, there's hundreds, because there's 30,000 30, hits. So you got 30,000 examples, okay? And each time you do a search, each time you do a search, you'll get a different group. But now advance the slide. And here, for the quick search, I've got a bunch of guys. So I just picked a bunch of guys. And so you, what you could do, you saw how many, uh, there were three. Go back to the colleges. Could you please keep going? More, 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 more. Yep. You could decide that you were going to just teach these first three, which are so frequent. So you could do a search for a bunch of guys, a bunch of kids, and a bunch of stuff. And then 
uh, you could now go to the last slide. And so for the quick search, I would, instead of a bunch of leaving it open, I would type a bunch of guys. And then I would get my sentences. And then I would type a bunch of kids, get my sentences, and then type a bunch of stuff. And then you just have those three choices and you make the same type of activity, but you say to students, you have to pick a bunch of guys, a bunch of kids, a bunch of stuff. And that way you're teaching the most frequent colicate. But that's something you can decide that you want, want to do or not want to do. Okay, so questions? No questions? Okay. Well, well, you know what I like? For, well, I like pictures, and you get to talk about them, but I like um, learning about language. And you learn about language, you know, because you can see what is popular, where it's popular, what are the different words. And we don't learn language one word at a time. We learn phrases. So learning phrases can be important. I've got to do a bunch of email back in my room. So I'm going to, I'll see everybody next year, I hope. But, uh, and I hope, uh, I think you have all of the um, websites and everything. But if there's something you need, my email is there and I'll be glad to uh, give it to you. Okay.